How are you gonna get you know anything open in a split second as this guy just walks right through the middle in full sprint and gets a sack? I mean, it's just not gonna happen. You have no time to throw. If we get a run play, which we get there, you can see it's the exact same effect. It was an inside run, and he basically stuffs that. And now both of these edge rushers just come in and meet the running back three yards in the backfield. And you can do this from just about any coverage in this formation where you're gonna get the exact same pressure. So I'm sending five against six blockers, and we're still getting a free rusher right down the middle every single time. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Still with the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a full breakdown today of my 3-4 odd scheme. This is something that I've been wanting to put out since the October 4th patch when they really changed how the 3-4 odd works because this is still one of the best defenses in the game. It's just you got to run it completely differently. So last week, I put out a full breakdown of the Big Nickel over G scheme, and it was very popular. So I'm thinking that you guys want to see this uh, from time to time, full scheme breakdowns to go along with the gameplay videos. So I do have some more 3-4 for odd gameplays planned for next week and in the future so i wanted to have a full breakdown video so that if there's people that watch that video and want to see the full breakdown i'll have a link in those gameplays to go right to these videos and vice versa if you're watching this and you want to see any gameplay i will have links to this uh links to gameplays i've already put out in the description of this video as well so as always if you guys want to see more practice mode style breakdown videos let me know in the comment section and hit the like button because there's a lot more that i could put out from this and other playbooks because i do plan on possibly switching back to the multi-D playbook from time to time for a couple of defenses that I have in there as well. So like I said, let me know in the comment section. But we're going to be focusing on the 3-4 odd. A lot of the plays in this formation um, can be run very similarly. So I'm not going to necessarily show every single defense but I will show you guys a couple of my favorites. The first thing I'm going to show is I'm going to go over my substitutions. The way that this was changed is this 3-4 outside linebacker was actually changed to a defensive end spot, which is really kind of weird um, because I don't really think that's typically how it goes. Typically, you have your, your three defensive linemen here, and now you have a defensive end spot, a defensive tackle, and another defensive tackle where this last guy is an end, which I don't really necessarily understand because typically you want somebody out here that has a little bit of a coverage ability, and defensive ends don't typically have that so i'm going to be blitzing this guy a lot anyway so i typically want to put my fastest outside linebacker which for me is going to be nolan smith jr but just have some speed at the edges my best pass rushers on the other side with his which is a son reddick and then i also want to make sure that these inside linebackers are just guys that are fast i don't really care about the ratings so i typically use sean bradley because he's like a, an 87 speed even though he's only a 61 overall he's like a special teams player all i really want is speed so if i put him in i have two guys with him and kobe dean i think are both 87 speed which is going to be important because these guys are actually going to get more pressure than they did pre-patch so that's going to be uh, my setup i got four linebackers in all these four spots now and they're all as fast as possible uh, the defensive linemen don't really matter as much because honestly they typically just get blocked after that there's not really a lot to do when it comes to the substitution so i'm going to show you guys my favorite plays with my setup i typically have the first spot here it's going to be my favorite play which is going to be the punch bug zero you can't necessarily run that all game though you kind of kind of have to switch in and out so my second favorite play i also like the uh, the salt blitz one i use quite a bit and my last two plays are both can be cover four and the cover four drop and the cover four quarters giving me a total of four audible plays my fifth play is typically going to be the cover six this is a play that i'll call as my active play so i don't really have to worry too much about um you know if i have if i if i see a run play i can always switch to one of my cover fours which i'll explain a little bit later if i see a pass play i have a, a couple options when it comes to better pass defenses which would be the pitch bug zero and the uh, the cover or the salt blitz one which are probably my favorite pass defenses but to me the best play out of all of them is going to be the cover six and that's because this one here is um, it's kind of the best of both worlds which I'll explain in a minute uh, after that I always want to make sure that I have my auto alignment to base there are a few more things you can do like I typically want to have my zone coverage to match those are probably two of the most important ones but I'm not going to go through all of them I make videos based off of my coaching adjustments I'll have a link in the description if you guys want to check that out but you're going to want your auto alignment to base because you're going to want all these defenses to look the same so that's going to be one of the most important things so like i said i'm going to start off with the cover six then on the offensive side i'm really just going to pick random but we're going to go we're going to stick uh we'll go under center we'll go random single back the place from today's video can be found in my las vegas raiders ebook if you guys want more help you can download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top end comment 
So the reason I run cover six so much is because most people don't know how to deal with cover sixes. There's uh, only a few holes in this defense, and they're typically on the cover two side. And I'll show you guys adjustments you can make for that. But when it comes to adjustments for this defense as it is, I don't really find you need a lot of adjustments. I feel like this defense after the patch might be best. In the past, I used to pinch the entire defense, but I feel like that really hurts the pass rush now, and it also hurts the um, it hurts the run defense as well. Where I feel like any inside run lanes here, there really isn't much because I have you know linebackers right in those holes. So I find that it's best to either leave it alone because you have pretty good uh, spacing when it comes to run defensive lanes, or if you really want to kick it up a notch, you can pinch the defensive line, which is deep pad left and down, and then spread the linebackers, which is deep pad to the right and up. And you'll notice that to Typically, these linebackers spread out like this, even though he didn't really do that. And now you have uh, no real inside lanes, and you have these uh, defensive or these outside linebackers spread far enough that they'll typically be outside of most um, you know alignments, which I have on the left side here, as you can see, who hold down that edge. But I don't really have it on the right side because we have three tight ends. So that's another reason why I like this defense, because I said earlier that this defense really has the best of both worlds, where in cover four safeties, like I have on this side here, they typically do a pretty good job. Of, of filling of filling run lanes so if you want to bring him down to the to the box he will act as an extra linebacker but i also have a cover two cornerback on the outside which will help me to hold down the outside run lanes. Now, in this particular play, I'm not too worried about them running outside to the left because I have this linebacker here. He'll hold that down. So if I want to flip this play, I feel like this is going to give me much better run defense by having Slay down out here. So if somebody tries to run a uh, stretch run or something like that to this edge, I should be pretty good. And now I can set my defense up the same way. The only other real issue with this defense is the cover two side is not that great in pass coverage. But I find that this guy here really isn't so Serving much of a purpose the three rack hook is typically better than a vert hook the vert hook uh, can match in a matching cover two but this is not a matching cover two this is a regular cover two because we have a cloud flat and not a a, um, a cover two sink so i find that since we don't have a soft squat it's best to put this guy either in a curl flat to mabel this side or if you think you're concerned with middle pass coverage you can always put him in a deep middle third and that will help this guy out here which you can now move to the sideline a little bit and he'll do a better job of cutting off the outside where this guy do a better job of taking away the inside this basically leaves this guy as my user but these are really the two ways that i'll run this to try to to try to you know have success and if i really want to kick my run defense up a notch i can also hard flat which will take off the matching principles uh but that's really like i said i'll only do that if i'm expecting a run so i don't really know what to expect because i got the computer on random here but uh, you can see how, you know, that there would have been mine if I had covered that a little bit better. But you can see how, um, you know, the defense sets up. And that's, that's pretty much my fault because that was pretty much my assignment. But, yeah, that's pretty much the base defense for, for this look. I'm not going to run this too much because, like I said, this is just to show you guys setups. I have plenty of gameplay of how I use these defenses. Now, another defense that I like a lot that I wouldn't necessarily keep my audible to sometime I'll use from time to time will be the cover three seam. This here is a full matching principle cover three, which is one of the reasons that I like it. So let's go to pick that we'll continue to go with the random single back this one here you can see based off of the seam flats that we have a matching cover three in typical cover four it's a curl flat so if you see a cover three with a curl flat you know it's not matching so matching coverages to me are one of the better ways to go which is why i said earlier make sure you always have match on and since i have my base set up nobody's really going to know what defense i'm in which is why i use about six plays in this coverage so you're not going to get a ton of pressure in this but there are some blitzes that you can create if you want to uh, basically get full if you want to send a blitz you can send this the blitz i'm going to show you right now you can really send from any defense in this package and all you really have to do is blitz all linebackers and you have to now either manually blitz the other outside linebacker which like i said it's not a linebacker anymore it's now a um it's now a uh, a defensive end or you can just like you know slant your your defensive line outside or something like that to get that look but i find it's best just to manually blitz them other than that if you're going to blitz you really want to spread everything because now the pressure typically comes from the inside linebackers if you spread everything so since you're uh, kind of running like a delayed blitz if i bring this guy down here he's going to be my user before dropping back uh, and gas pass i don't know if it's going to be a, a pass or a run but if i drop back once the play starts typically the other linebacker is going to get a free run and you can see right there he gets right up the middle 
and I'm still really not paying attention to coverage, but you saw how we got a free uh, rusher right up the B gap, which is really important. So my job on this play at as 17 there is really just to press the guard and release, but if I start over this gap a lot of times, I won't even have to do that, and I can just drop back. You can see 70 blocks, nobody. And this guy here just comes screaming down the B gap and gets pressure, which forced a bad throw and an incomplete pass on Dak Prescott. And that's pretty consistent. I don't really have to um, you know, do too much for that. You just have to make sure that when you blitz, that these guys' blitz angles are a little bit more straight. You saw in that last play that um, he didn't really run straight ahead. I want him to run straight ahead, not take any angles, because that gives him more of a chance of getting picked up. So once again, just basically dropping over the gap here. If we get a run play, which we get there, you can see it's the exact same effect. It was an inside run, and he basically stuffs that. And that's pretty much the exact same thing, only this time the defensive end comes off the edge too. And you can see there, because it was a run play, the guard did get a hold of me. But the guard on the other side is the one that gets confused now as he ends up blocking nobody. And now both of these edge rushers just come in and meet the running back three yards in the backfield. So there's a lot of different things you can do here to make this um, to make this play uh, more effective. But it's a pretty quick setup. You know what I mean, all I'm really doing is blitzing all twice. And, uh, you know, just readjusting the linebackers to make sure they're in the right place. And I'll guess pass if I think it's going to be a pass. You can see right there, we get that B gap one more time as Dax understands he has nowhere to go. And like I said, that's pretty much my worst defensive player getting the pressure every single time, which is why I said all you really want is speed out of this spot. As you can see, this guy here just walks right down the middle. I mean, this is this is terrible. You know what I mean? Like, and every single time, a guard is blocking nobody. So you end up with a five-on-five five pressure and actually it's six on five the running backs blocking too so i'm sending five against six blockers and we're still getting a free rusher right down the middle every single time so that's the cover three version like i said there is more than one cover three but the cover three sky is not matching principles and i find the matching principles is probably best uh next up i'll show you guys another matching principle play in the cover four quarters which is probably going to be the best run defense now before the patch this was not a very viable uh pass defense but post patch is pretty good depending on what offensive pack that you're looking at if you're playing against something that has three receivers to one side or even four receivers to one side which you'll see quite a bit in uh, empty formations now um, it can glitch this out very easily so don't do it don't run this against that but if any any offensive package where there's one or two receivers to a side you're fine uh, but other than that like i said there's more than that there's a there's a higher probability of getting glitched out so like i said three receivers to a side four receivers to a side don't call this call the regular cover four which i'll show you in a minute after that, though, um, the setup is the same as far as you can pinch the defensive line and spread and all that. But if you're really trying to get your best run defense, I find it's best to base the line, show blitz, and then base the line again because the safeties will drop down to the outside and the cornerbacks will, will, will drop back. So basically, these guys will be really, you know, act as extra run defenders in the box especially if you get them wide outside if you got somebody running a lot of stretches get them outside yeah, i mean that that's it's going to be your concern to cut off inside throws if they're quick inside throws but you can get those safeties outside to help you with those with those outside runs it's going to be a benefit especially against a D, an offensive package like this where i'm sure the stretch run is going to be very popular so hopefully i'll get a stretch run here but if i want to go full coverage i can use the blitzing guy and leave this guy here i could also uh, put him into a middle third if i think that there's going to be a, an opportunity for a quick throw based on the fact that i'm spreading my safety so much but i have nine guys in the box essentially and if i don't get past those extra safeties are going to help out in the run a lot so hopefully we'll get a run play i haven't seen a stretch run yet and you can see once again we get a run play and we're, we're shutting it down for a loss i might have to manually choose the stretch run because i don't know if, if they're ever going to choose it i don't even know if the cowboys have it in their offense if i'm being honest so that might be something i might have to back out entirely but uh, the stretch run is going to be there we go we got to have back stretch i'll pick that the reason I'm picking that, like I said, is because I want to uh, make sure, as I'm trying to baseline show blitz baseline to get these guys in the proper position, I want to make sure that these guys, um, you know, just to show you guys how this, because I know a lot of people struggle with outside run defense, and I just want to make sure that that uh, you guys see that these safeties really can help out. So, like I said, I'm going to start here, and you can see we're just there's just nowhere to run. We, we're just there was nothing inside, there was nothing outside, and I'll go back to the replay, and you can see that uh, these safeties. You know what I mean? I'm filling that lane. Obviously, we had a defensive tackle get through. But even if we got to the edge, I mean, there's really nothing out here. This this defense really will stretch you out to the edge as far as possible. Like I said, this play is also a pretty good goal line play. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out to uh, QB sneak. Show you guys how this does the QB sneak defense. Now, when it comes to the setup for both fullback dive and QB sneak, all you really got to do is pinch the entire defense and then uh, blitz both linebackers. And you can see you still have all your zone coverages available if it turns out to be a pass. 
But at the end of the day, you just have to bring this blitzing linebacker down right over this gap here. I typically hold the D-pad, the D or the stick down so that um, you know when he hikes the ball, I'm just right there. And you can see that typically they'll kneel hit. I mean, you can see the Cowboys players aren't celebrating. Typically they'll celebrate if it scores. Like I said, uh, you can also slant inside, but if you slant inside, you'll be susceptible against uh, the fullback dive, so be aware of that. But if you want to be good against both, you don't do anything. As you can see here, we slant inside, and there we just got a BS animation. I mean, he was stopped, but the, it triggered an animation where it's like he just he just went like full turbo mode, which nothing you can really do about that. But at the end of the day, this is the best setup. Like I said, this is best for uh, fullback dive and for QB sneak, and you can see Dax typically not getting in. So unless he triggers some crazy animation like he did before and that setup also works against uh the fullback dive which is something a lot of people will run and it's gonna be the same setup i'm just pinching the defense and i'm just blitzing all linebackers that's all you gotta do bring the same guy down you'll see a lot of times i'll be able to make the play but it's really gonna be the other linebackers turn a lot of times you can see there's just nowhere to go there's just no holes and uh he just he just runs into a wall so this is definitely like i said it's my favorite goal line defense and it's also very consistent when it comes to stopping um you know some of the more popular runs as you can see once again we get a, a free rusher right through and you know it doesn't matter qb sneak fullback dive it's stopping them both all i gotta do is pinch the defense and uh you know blitz all linebackers that's all you gotta do and you can see how i mean we're just getting a free rusher every single time so even if they were i mean from the looks of that even if it was a pass play he'd probably be dead to rights now the cover for drop is very similar it just doesn't have matching principles when it comes to this coverage this is really like more like a prevent for me i don't really find that this particular defense is the more effective when it comes to uh coverage so but this will make sure that nobody gets behind him now, you can also do the same blitz if you want to blitz all linebackers and then you could also slant um your 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 outside uh you know to the, you slant your um your outside linebackers by hitting a deep pad to the left and up to slant outside and i could do pretty much the exact same setup where i can bring this guy down before dropping back and a lot of times i'll get that same b gap pressure although you got to get off that line pretty quick and like i said you can give up short stuff because there is no um you know the 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 safeties and the the cornerbacks all they really want to do is make sure nothing is behind them so that's why i said i really only call this in a third and long or a fourth and long i don't want to call this um you know if, if it's uh maybe there's a minute left in the game and i'm up a, a touchdown i might call something like this to make sure my opponent doesn't get any quick scores just make sure nothing gets behind them but you can see how we can get that exact same uh b gap pressure from the exact same player with the exact same setup from the cover three and you could do this from just about any coverage in this formation where you're going to get the exact same pressure so if you like cover four you like cover three you like cover two you can do the same setup every single time and you can see how um you know we got somebody blocking and nobody once again we get a very easy sack and that's also one of the better run defenses but i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna move on because i already showed cover four and that to me is like a lesser version now i saved the best for last in the pinch bug zero which this and the uh saw blitz one are two of the better uh pass coverages in this particular formation you can see i also average some of the lowest amount of yards per per attempt now this defense is my favorite I don't have to do anything for the pass rush. Since that linebacker is down in the gap like that, I can leave him there, and all I have to do is really blitz my my linebacker uh, before dropping back the coverage. If the running back goes out in a pattern, I do have to cover him. But doing it this way, a lot of times we'll get the defensive outside linebacker off free. So I want to do that. As you can see, I mean, we just we just I don't know what happened there. I mean, we had everybody busting through the middle. So if the linebacker comes down automatically like that, don't make any adjustments because it'll make him walk back. If I spread the defensive line or spread the linebackers, you see now he walks back, which is fine because this is also a pretty good blitz setup. Uh, the second blitz setup, which I showed in the cover three and the cover four, which is just spread everybody and bring this blitzer down before dropping back. This will be just as effective, if not more. As you can see, we get that A gap right up the middle once again, or that B gap right up the middle. Although he didn't make the tackle, uh, but you can see that's, that's going to be the same look. So you really have that option. But I find that uh, if since the linebacker is walking down, let's just let him walk down. We'll get pressure off of a different area anyway. As you can see now, the outside linebacker comes flying in. So there's really no reason to mess that up. So two different setups. This is the only one that you can do like this, though. Because of the linebacker walking down into the blitzing gap, you'll get the, uh, the edge pressure. None of the other defenses really do that, which is what makes this one of my favorite defenses. You really have multiple options. And you'll still get beat by the same things that beat cover zero, things like that, because the safety is so far back. Not a lot you can do about that. That's why even though this is a very good defense, you can't run it over and over because people will diagnose it and eventually start to beat it with things like zigs and slants and drags and all kinds of stuff that beat man coverage. 
But you can see how that, uh, you know, right there. I didn't even make any adjustments, and the A-gap still came through, like, super fast. I mean, that's you can't ask for a faster blitz than this. As you can see, I mean, he's down in the line right in his face. I mean, that's how are you going to get, you know, anything open in a split second as this guy just walks right through the middle in full sprint and gets a sack? I mean, it's just not going to happen. You have no time to throw. Now, if you do have somebody that starts beating this with something like a zig or a slant or a drag, you can always fake it. And then put this guy in a hard flat on the outside. Um, you know, you, you always have options when it comes to, uh, you know, what you can do with some of these um, outside blitzing edge rushers. You can see right there, he hits me with that bubble screen. And Nolan Smith is all over it, which, you know, a couple plays ago didn't really work out that way. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this defense aside from just sending an all-out blitz, uh, which I'll go ahead and I'll do uh, one more time as I'm just having fun getting these A-gaps. Now, I'm glad that it was a run play because that is probably the biggest issue with this defense. If I were to scale these um, as far as ranking them against the run, I would say cover four quarters is the best run defense and pinch buck zero is the worst. So that's probably going to be something that your opponents might try to attack because once you get through that first layer of heavy blitzing, you're not going to have a lot after that. You're not going to have a lot of uh, safety help. You're not going to have a lot of people behind it. So this is a, a heavy pressure style blitz. It is very successful if you get you know you get a lot of sacks and we do get another sack there, another instant sack. That's going to push your opponent back into the second and long, third and long. It's going to make your opponent predictable and then at that point you can switch out to one of these other defenses that are a little bit better in pass coverage now i also got the mike blitz zero here this one here is probably the few one of the few where i will base a line uh based off the fact that i don't want to have to have a linebacker on a receiver and then i'll also make sure that i like to um this is one of the few it was probably the most radically different one that i like to run where i'll also shift my defensive line to the right and then whoever is on the uh the the, the running back i'll have to cover so i'm going to basically bring this guy down over the gap here and uh, guess pass this is something that will actually get a lot of pressure as well although it's not necessarily the the best run defense because i mean it's not gonna be the best run defense against the qb sneak because i'm gonna set my qb sneak defense up but this is a very good play we'll go and we'll continue with this because i i do plan on ending the video here after we get a a good play with this but this is pretty much it like i said this is a good you know i, I give away that it's a cover one but cover one's one of the better pass defenses i can also come over this gap here i don't have to come over that gap i just i just like to be over that gap if it's going to be a pass because I got to sprint out but you can see here if it's a run it might be better for me to be in that gap even though it's not once again the best run defense it's very similar to man zero as far as uh, its ineffectiveness in run defense so be aware of that these man coverages are not great run defenses I'm going to do one more time like I said I'm just basically you know I'm hoping for a, a pass because this is really a better pass defense than anything but I'll stay in this gap because if the running back goes out I got to follow and we're going to get another run. You can see we get that edge pressure. That's the point of this whole shift to the side is we get that edge pressure from this particular package. And if we go to the instant replay, you can see how this guy's not blocked. It's only, I think I'm only sending four, maybe five. Yeah, I'm sending five. And they're blocking six because the running back was blocking once again. But Hassan Reddick just comes off the edge because that's what the shift is about. The shift's going to get him off every single time. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more full breakdowns of offenses and defenses on Fridays, they seem to go really popular because I know more people have time to watch these type of lengthy videos on the weekend, which is why I like to put them out on Fridays. Make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Much it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.